Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. Today, I'm here to share my conversation with the man behind the remarkably musical and engaging Lampazator products, Lucas Ficus. Now, this discussion was recorded Sunday morning before the final day of Expo 2023 opened. And though we cover some broad strokes, we focus on the new flagship Lampazator DAC, the Horizon. Now, I'm working on finishing up the first US review and you should see it in print, along with a companion episode here at the channel, very soon. But let's get to it. Here's Lucas. Today we're here with Lucas Ficus, the, the brains and, and designer behind the amazing Lampazator products. And I want to talk about my review of this product should be out any day, hopefully very soon, the uh, Horizon. Um, it's large and it's in charge. I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. I first got exposed to your products, I think around 2016 with the Golden Gate. And it was, most of you guys know I wasn't a digital person until about that time because I started to hear DACs and, and CD players that sounded more analog, more musical. Can you tell us how you got into designing these kinds of things? Yeah. Uh... It's, it's, it's great to be here, and uh, thank you for such a nice introduction. Oh, buddy, come on. You know, you know what I think of your work. For years, I've been a fan, so... <laughs> and you mentioned that you, you've never been digital. No. I don't think anybody is digital because of liking it, because there's <laughs> nothing to like. Digital was um, not really something um, sexy or, or, or ear-friendly. No, it wasn't. It was convenient for the variety of uh, music that you could get. And it wasn't so important when, in the CD era because you could, have, you could own or collect CDs or vinyl. Sure. But today with streaming, there is like a, it's like a, no more a question uh, if, if you want to do it because... It's an essential source these millions, days. Yeah. Millions of, of yeah. recordings on an instant and then being able to jump from one to another is very addictive, very nice and informative. And uh, even though it's a little bit disrupting for, for the brain, for the focus on music, <laughs> It's still a fantastic thing. So I think digital is the way to go. Uh, Absolutely. The, the access to music, the diversity of access, the, the rabbit holes I've gone down listening to some of these yeah. streaming services, you get all kinds of access to music. And devices like this, and, and I don't know uh, if you've seen my Baltic 3 review, and I'm about to talk about it as the Baltic 4 because they were kind enough to upgrade my Baltic 3. But um, the Horizon, you were kind enough to let me have that for a while, and I, I'm the review's close. Uh, I was absolutely struck by the the things that I love most about analog mm -hmm. okay bloom body space mm -hmm. it's just not usually there and when I reviewed the Baltic 3 I bought it because it was at I think sixty six hundred dollars retail in the US I was like holy crap this thing's amazing but how did you what what drove yeah. you to start building these let's, great devices yeah so let's to, to, to put the long story short sure um, my biggest discovery was that digital at that time at that time I mean 1990 something so the, the digital sounded bad not because it was digital but because it was done wrong okay and somebody pointed me just in the direction of tubes and saying if you want to do this right this is the way to go. And I took that advice and it was like life-changing experience. So I realized that the, 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 the very fact that you store some information in digital form and recreate the wave doesn't need to be necessarily bad sounding. What happens after that, that means the conversion process and then the output stage and then all the analog section in the CD player at that time. That analog section uh, in particular, yeah. That destroys any joy of music <laughs> and makes us think, oh, because it's digital. I think it was to do with the, the schools that produce engineers that go out into the marketplace. Okay. Uh, first we had analog engineers and then they invented digital. So somebody trying to open a digital company would say, well, uh, let's hire some digital people and see what they can do. And they hired from entirely different 
a pool of engineers. And the digital people came and said, what's your problem? Oh, you have digital music. Huh, let's me, I will show you how to do it. And they did all <laughs> the wrong digital way, which works well in the automat oh, automation industry, in factory environment, in computers, but doesn't work for listening to the music. Yeah. And I, I came from a different angle. I'm an electrician, not electronic engineer. So as an electrician, I understood a lot about power supply, heat, sure. current, voltage, uh, distortions, what have you. But I was never trained to use op-amps as building blocks. Therefore, I was uncomfortable with op-amps and everything they do, all the negative feedback and uh, all the um, associated problems with, with op-amps. So I went straight into tubes, which was the only language I understood was a tube language, anode, grid, cathode. Well, thank God for us that you weren't into that indoctrinated side. So, And then even at that time when I started, there were a couple of companies flirting with tubes versus CD players uh, like uh, uh, Anthony Michaelson in, in, in Musical Fidelity. Yes, he made his yes. first little frog kind of like a CD player. And uh, some other people, uh, also um, VAC uh, from Florida, they yes. had their tube duck, etc. That didn't last very long, by the way. It didn't last yeah. because they didn't understand how deep they have to go upstream, yeah. Yeah. straight to the chip, yeah. to connect their tubes. They were using tubes more like buffers, yeah. for, for coloring yeah. sound, for making it interesting. Giving a flavor that was yeah, what they were to looking sell, for. Something yeah. crazy, something yeah. people would put on the, on the cover of a magazine, or CD player with tubes. Yeah. But they, 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 I was the first person probably who understood that tubes can be a solution to all the other problems. Well, you, you mentioned that, and I, I, I have to tell the, the people who have known me forever, I had a CD player when they came out because I had to. I hated it. Mm -hmm. I won't mention the brand. But in 94, I think it was, when um, Alpine bought Luxman, mm -hmm. they came out with a tubed output CD player. It was the D105U. He used a pair of six CD7s in the output yes. stage. And it was listenable. It wasn't great, but it was listenable. Yeah. I modified it, I know. Oh, you had? Okay. All right. So you're, okay. So now you've gotten this, this, uh, this idea to build the whole thing based around tubes instead of... Yes. Yeah, so so my, my, my hobby first and then ob obsession became CD players, how we could convert them into tubes. Uh, and so, it, so to, to erase the mistakes of the original okay. design and uh, each CD player had a different chip. So I could, I could hear because I, I was able to design only one circuit at, at that time. So I had the same constant circuit right. in every CD player that existed in ninety in the nineties. So I could uh, my conclusion was wow they, they sound kind of different but kind of similarly fantastic. Okay. Even though some chips had their own flavor but not that big as people would uh, think that uh, let's say a Philips chip would be different from a Brown chip or. Texas okay, chip. you're talking about the actual chipsets. Yeah, yeah. The chipsets. Yeah. So yeah. I thought well okay. the, the chipset and even the digital process is not that important. It's it has a some factor of importance. <laughs> okay. What is important is the output stage where everything lies. Right. right. So from that then I became obsessed with improving that, that output stage. And I was constantly in touch with my mentor, um, designer, uh, Mr. Uh, Evgeny Kreminsky from Ukraine. And he was always smiling. He was very secretive. And he would like put out two, three words per week. And he would say, mm, you know, tubes are the way to go. And the bigger, the better. Okay. And I, I soaked that in. I said, what? Just the bigger, the better. Don't ask why, we don't know why. <laughs> and I thought that he was joking, and then I said, uh, you mean like I could use the 300B? Yeah, you could wow. use the 300B. Yeah. So I put together on a, on a breadboard, like a five minute 300B circuit, I connected to the CD, Philips CD player, and then the rest is history. I was, I was completely hooked on the sound sure. of a digital output stage with big tubes. To analog output. And, uh, you know, don't ask me why. And if I knew, I wouldn't tell you, but I don't know. So I can tell you. That's okay. I don't know. That's okay. Um, maybe it has to do with the density, let's say, of milliamps per square inch of the metal anode, cathode, and right. that where the electrons flow within the tube. Well, and, you know, valves work differently in some ways as to how they deal with the electrical interaction of, of certain things. And I think. You know, there, there are certain tube amps that have enjoyed certain, tremendous amounts of success because 
that's what they're based around is the way they sound. So now you so like I said, I'd mentioned the Golden Gate, and then came that was our first uh, yeah. dock with uh, big tubes. Yeah, and, uh, and it was power triodes meant to work in an amplifier environment, right. and they were meant to to conduct um, tens and tens of milliamps, if not 100 milliamps, of 500 volt uh, uh, supply, and we only reduced it to 200 volts and maybe 5 milliamps. So, in other words, it was like having a V8 engine in a very small car. You may not need it, but it's nice to have. Well, it, it was part of what makes a V8 engine a V8 engine that works regardless of how it's being driven. And so, this device is, first of all, the Nixie tubes are cool. Okay, I'm sorry, that's just cool. I'm from an era that remembers those. I could not resist. Besides how cool those are, um, the tube complement, I've had a, when I had a few people come to my place to listen, and they were like, the thing shipped with a, was it a f uh, 5U4G rectifier, mm -hmm. yes. a pair of 6CG7s, mm -hmm. and four KT120s. Yes. Now, I've had guys walk in and go, that's an amplifier. There's four KT120s in there. Can you walk us through the tube choices and what, how they actually... Because, uh, by the way, the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, the, the device has its ability, it will drive your amplifiers directly. It has its own control and capability to drive by itself. Now, I used it, prim now I did listen to it that way. I primarily used it through a buffered preamplifier mm -hmm. and it was fabulous. But can you explain why this complement matters? Yeah, so as I mentioned, the, the experiment with 300B leading to creation of the Big 7 DAC and then its luxurious version, the Golden Gate, uh, and then the Pacific. The Pacific, yeah. Uh, we were reassured in our, in our observation that large power tubes driven in a very low car and, and, and uh, small power, they, they respond with certain type of sound that is very addictive to me, very easy going, very liquid, very three-dimensional. Yes. And uh, it's it's just effortless. Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. So uh, I, did, I wanted to, to stick to large tubes and then um, th th there are hundreds of, how should I put it, hundreds of, 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 of factors why we took this decision, but we wanted to stick to large tubes, power tubes, but more easily accessible and with less variations in their requirements, like a, the, the environment, because okay. in Golden Gate you had to fine-tune every t tube to their bias and also uh, to their heaters, okay. different voltage. Okay. Every DHT tube has different heater requirements. Uh, the, the power pentodes, they are all with the same heater requirements, which is like 2 amps slash 6.3 volts. So it was easier to roll tubes. Okay. I didn't need to spend half of my budget on, on a heater adjusting circuits like okay. the Golden Gate. So I could focus on music rather than uh, adopt the, the product to the different tubes that people may find somewhere. So th that choice was a natural uh, way of making great sound with less problems. That's how I would uh, how I would put it versus Golden Gate. That sure. You mentioned. Now this uh, features a new well a, a new engine the, what you call the engine 19 yes can you talk about because the Baltic that I had is an engine 11 I believe yes these, these codes are meaningless are the only well to you to, to, us, to lampasator to, to yeah remember what what is inside um, I would say that um, somewhere uh, just before just before COVID uh, we were because we are being recognized as people who are fanatical about digital technology. So Thank you for that. <laughs> ship manufacturers recognize us as, as beta testers. Okay. And we get chips shipped to us even without asking for them from a couple of major players. Sure. And they send us a, a, a benign looking envelope with, with chips inside. Say, yeah, would you mind uh, like taking a test drive with these chips? And, and we did. And it was the biggest quality increase I've ever heard in my in my designer's career. Wow, okay. And we, we, we knew that the, the, the tube circuits was our own breadboard tube right. circuit. We knew our listening room, our speakers, but the increase of quality was something we never anticipated even randomly possible. So we were completely speechless and floored by what we heard. And then COVID hit and we could not even put the that that's chip to to um, uh, to the, uh, like design a finished product Im immediately as we, we wished. Yeah. So we spent two years 
tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it and improving and, and like going really crazy. We became a church of that sound. <laughs> and eventually, um, we eventually we came up with Horizon. So the, the whole rest of the product is just to do justice to this beautiful chip sound and uh, which we discovered. And so we needed to give it adequate power supply, sure. adequate housing, sure. adequate tubes and everything that goes with it. But it was worth it because the, 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 the sound Oh, the result like is spectacular. Nothing we've heard before uh, or after. Yeah, yeah. Now, in, in, when you talk about the industrial design of this, the the chassis on this is just amazing. It's it is massive. Um, I had to like think about how to get it to sit where my stuff, where the Baltic used to sit. But it is such. It's sexy looking as hell, and it's functional as hell. It makes perfect sense why it looks like this. Yeah. Now, um, you know when I when I had this um, you know I've uh, I get to play with a lot of nice toys and what I'm going to be saying in the review is as a single standalone DAC this thing has reset the bar in my experience in so many ways the the resolution typically CD players and expensive stacks of, of mm -hmm. digital systems have resolution in a sense that to me makes them Less musical, more sterile, more like a scientific instrument. This thing makes music, and I, I think I had told uh, Fred at one point. I have, I have a, uh, I love a band called the Dixie Dregs. They're a bunch of great musicians, and I have some really good pressings. I also have the CD ripped. Mm -hmm. The CD rip through this device, I think, is actually more faithful to what I heard them sound like live than the direct disc remaster, the original pressing, whatever. Dude, this thing is staggeringly good. And I, I mean, I'm so glad you spent all that time doing this because it certainly has paid off. Um, this, this is a device that has changed how I look at... Well, I, honestly, when the Baltic 3 came back as the Baltic 4, mm -hmm. you know, my original concern with the Baltic 3 was that it wasn't quite as resolute as some other devices, yes. but its ability to express musicality was. Well, the you guys you guys kind of nullified that entire complaint with that new Engine Eleven because it was like, are, are you kidding me? This isn't the same DAC. Yes, so. yes, that was that was as close as we could get to to this kind of solution. But the, the, you you mentioned the, the, the other products being with resolution and even expensive. Big oh yeah, hundred forty thousand dollars, three yeah. piece, four piece stacks. That's uh, the, coming back to, to 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 the beginning of our conversation. I told you that in in the in the uh, late eighties, people employed digital engineers right. to create digital products. So now, uh, instead of having a two thousand dollar DAC, one thousand dollar DAC, some companies wanted to have a hundred thousand dollar DAC. So they would they would invite even more digital people. <laughs> and those people will be more digital than, the, than their predecessors. And they said, make me something super digital. Yeah. That, that led to that sound that was... A, 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 it's an, antiseptic and dry evol and not Evolution musical. and, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, a bigger version of the digital we didn't like. So that makes our life so so nice <laughs> because we are working in an industrial environment that is very friendly to us. Yeah. Because we stand out from the yeah. rest, sort sort of. Yeah. Um, there, there are some people who understand th this aspect, but there are uh, there's few of them, so who, there is enough room for all of us. Well, yeah, but I think I think people like myself, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people who are gear driven. They're into it. They're into it for the gear. And I'm fortunate in that, you know, I, I don't like spending a lot of money. I just like hearing music like it sounds when I go out to hear music live. And, buddy, you've done a tremendous job with this device. I am so thankful you've done it. Um, Thank you. Is My there, pleasure. Uh, Lucas, is there anything else you want to discuss? Is there anything I haven't asked you that you think you want to talk about with the Horizon before we close today? No. Uh, well, uh, I think that you, you, you nailed it in your last sentence, that it's all about music. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I myself, I'm not driven by technology or solutions or the look or the price or the feel. I'm only driven by the music. Yeah. And this product was designed in the dark, literally in the dark room. 
because 97%, 98% of time spent on designing this product was sitting in a completely pitch black room and switching with the remote control some this decision making relays, yeah. ch choosing between operating points, voltage points, okay. two different resistors, two different capacitors, a capacitor with a bypass, two capacitors with one bypass and one resistor, and then choosing and choosing and choosing and l looking for more music. Sure. Give me more music. And when the music was full and complete, I switch on the light, I say, okay, this is the solution we're gonna put in the box. We look inside, oh, oh okay. <laughs> let's put it in a nice box, but this is it. This is music. Well, this is a sexy industrial design and the most musically engaging single device DAC I have yet heard. And I can't thank and you enough, Lucas. We will time continue on this path. So oh, yeah. We will have always something to talk about next year. You got it, buddy. Thanks for your time, pal. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Till next time, we'll see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. It should be quite clear that Lucas is as passionate about the quality of the music his products recreate as he is about building the products themselves. My experience with Lampazator products has led me to purchase the original Baltic 3, now updated to the Baltic 4 because of its overwhelming ability to regenerate digital information, both local files stored on my network attached storage as well as playing streams directly from Cobuzz in an exceptionally musically engaging analog sounding manner. Guys, as I mentioned during our conversation, the new Lampazator Horizon is simply the most compelling magical music making machine I've yet experienced. Period. And in fact, it has established such an impressive accomplishment in that regard that I'm going to be working very hard to find a way to live with one permanently. As always, thanks for taking the time to drop by. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. And in fact, today I'm very pleased to acknowledge a new sponsor-level Patreon membership from Lampazator North America. Thank you. Guys, please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>